This is JJ and All Radio. I'm your host, Jimbo Kimbo McGee. Today we're talking about third world neighbors, and more specifically, the book Triangle, The Five That Changed America. Today we have David Brown here, author that today that wrote that book, and we're going to ask him a few questions. Come here, David. How you doing, sir? How you doing? Okay, so I, I got to ask, why did you write this book? Uh, well, I wrote this book because... Um, I want people to know some of the history of of this fire, and I just didn't want it to go without getting noticed. Uh, it was a tragedy in the United States, and I also believe that these people should get some recognition. Well, what people are you exactly talking about? Uh, the people that were caught in the fire, the whole ninth level was trapped and burned alive, um, all for a job that paid one dollar for sixteen hours. So. You pretty much wrote this book for the people to realize what they had gone through back then. But tell me, how bad was it? Yes, yeah, I wrote this book uh, so people know uh, that it's it's not a good thing for the sweatshops. And uh, the sad thing is, is that these sweatshops still exist today all around the world. They are now even hiring children for labor. You know what, that, that's a damn shame, you know, because I, I hear about this all the time on the news. But, you know, that, that brings us to our next segment on child labor. And, but I want to thank you for coming out here and talking about your book. Well, thank you. Now into our next segment, we have a guest here from the dead. Yes, I, I said it from the dead. Michael Jack's here to talk with us, but before we do that, we're going to go on a commercial break. Tony, stop smoking. I thought you loved me. Don't you know secondhand smoking could kill me? Can't kill me. Secondhand smoke, also known as ETS, plays a part in more health problems than people realize. The following facts point out why it is so important to have smoking bans in place. No one should be forced to breathe in air tainted with cigarette smoke. Uh, There's 3,000 non-smokers die every year from lung cancer caused by ETS. We are back to JJ and our radio, and I'm here with uh, Michael Jackson on the line. Uh, Michael, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Michael, a long time no here. How, how have you been lately? Well, I'm dead, so yeah, I'm all okay, I guess. Well, Michael, today is time to work. Well, right now, we're going to talk about child labor, and um, I just wanted to ask you, how do you feel about that? Well, Jimbo... I feel very ashamed for the adults who think they can just take little children and use them for work. Children should be allowed to roam the fields and play and have a childhood like I never had. I, 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 I see. Now, uh, well, well, tell us what you think about the book, The Triangle. Well, in the book, in the child labor that goes on now, there is no real difference. They are treated poorly and get paid with very low wages. These wages could even get a couldn't even get a ma meal at McDonald's. Ah, crap. Ha. Well, well, you know you feel very strongly about this child labor thing and that. So, what shouldn't exist about it? Well, we are the world. The children are the world. They need to grow and flourish and not have to work. It's unbelievable that we can just take advantage of little kids and use them. I think we should all take a take a look at ourselves in the mirror and try to make the world a better place. Otherwise, beat it! We don't need you here bringing this world down and not helping it get any better. You what? are gay. Well, my God, that, 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 that wasn't me talking. That, uh, well, that, was, that, that was very interesting. Um, but I think um, what you're saying here right now is it's, it's very inspirational to us kids. And, and, well, not saying I am a kid, but you might consider me as a kid. But, um... It, it, it's very informational, but in a different, you know, world, it kind of scares me. That was Michael Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Michael, thank you for coming on the show. Do you have any last words to say? 
So long. I'm done. <laughs> All right, Michael. Thank you. Thank you off the line. Uh, mm. Michael. Okay. Yes. Michael, just stop. Oh, we have another caller on the line, and this lady Alba is from the Women's Suffrage Group, and um, she's here to talk with us. Um, her name is Alba Belmont, and um, Alba, how are you doing today? Good. Um, tell me a few things about women's rights in the sweatshops. Um, well, back back in the day, us women didn't have any rights. To men, we were created equal, and thus got lower wages in sweatshops. So, so Alba, so how did you and other women try to change this? Because believe me, I understand that back then women didn't really have a lot of rights and a lot of them were afraid to, you know, make moves like this. So tell me, how did you try to change this? Well, you see, I was drawn by a movement created by Anna Shaw. Mm -hmm. It was the National American Women's Suffrage Association. Okay. I donated large amounts of money to help the women's suffrage movement. I donated the United Kingdom and the United States. I later founded the Political Equality League. Very cool, Alva. Uh, okay, so it seems like you had a lot to do with this, making it better for women in the early 1900s. Am I right or wrong? Yes, you're right. So who else was involved in this group? Well, it was not only me, but there was a lot of other women in this fight, too, to make things better. I'm very proud of them, and it was them who fought for their rights. Every woman had a say in this. Well, guys, you know, that that, that was Alva uh, Belmont. And, um, today, uh, we just had a lot of a lot of um, classic um, people on here, and I'm just grateful that they're still, you know, not technically alive, but you know, we we went back in time and we try to, you know, you know, get the the just of things. Hello, hello, oh, 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 that was just our studio audience. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, you know, I just I just want to see. Hold on, is somebody is Michael still? Hold on, is Michael there? Michael. I guess I'm not. Yes. Oh, oh, my, Michael, what, what, what are you? Why are you still here? I'm sorry. Uh, Michael, um, we're about to end the show, so um, you might have to go home. Can I stay with you tonight? Michael, I'm married, so I don't, I don't think that would be the right move for you to make. Well, what's wrong with sharing your bed? My wife sleeps there, and sometimes our little daughter sleeps there, so I don't think that would be the right move for you. I'm a vegetarian, and I don't drink. Okay, well, we're, we're after this break, we're going to come back <laughs> and... Oh, Michael, okay. We're off the line. Uh, we'll be back. Give him hot milk. <laughs> so that was Michael Jackson there. Uh, Michael, thank you for coming on the show. Do you have any last words? <laughs> <laughs> So that was Michael Jackson on the show. Uh, Michael, thank you for coming all along. Uh, do you have any last words? No. <laughs> so that was Michael Jackson. Uh, we'd like to thank Michael for coming along. Uh, Michael, do you have any last words to say? Can I stay with you tonight? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in our show. We'd like to thank our special guest for stopping by. It's been a great night, and we couldn't do it without you. Can't touch me. Can't touch me. Judge, 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 just like the bad guy from Lethal Weapon 2. I've got diplomatic immunity, so hey, mate, you can't sue. I can write graffiti, even jaywalk in the street. I can riot, whoop, not give a hoop, and touch your sister's teeth. Can't touch me. Can't touch me. I've been roaming around, always looking down at all I see Painted faces fill the places I can't reach You know that I can use somebody